Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the first ever Good Skin Health and Aesthetics Introduction by Zynashaw. I'm Francesca White, Tatler's Health and Beauty Editor at Large and founder of the Beauty Triangle, and it's a pleasure to be here speaking with you all today. Joining me is the fantastic Ms. Sharina Balaratnam, former surgeon, aesthetic doctor, and founder of SNX Clinic in Beaconsfield. And together we're going to be taking a closer look into what good skin health means to us today and crucially what we can do to achieve it. After all, healthy skin means different things to each of us. For some of us, it's about doing away with dullness and really getting our skin glowing. For others, it's about restoring an even skin tone or reducing pigmentation. But there are so many options out there and sometimes knowing where to start can be overwhelming, especially after year that we've all had. Most of us have been staring at our faces on Zoom and we're noticing changes that were not there before. Subtle shifts in our skin that are making us look tired, lacklustre, or simply not as fresh as we would like. And this is where lasers come in. Now, laser treatment can sound scary to those of us who are new to it. And I'm sure many of us associate these treatments with a hefty downtime, inflammation, and even a bit of discomfort. But the good news is that lasers have evolved since the dark ages. And with greater technology and education, we're achieving some phenomenal results, helping our skin to look clearer, brighter, and more radiant, but also helping to restore good skin health. And there's no better person to explain this exciting new tech to us than Ms. Sharina Balaratnam, whose laser suite in her Beaconsfield clinic is one of the most futuristic rooms I've ever been in. We'll also have time for a Q&A at the very end of the session, so you can ask all the skin-related questions that you might have. Just pop them in the question box and we'll do our very best to answer them. And now, it gives me great pleasure to hand over to Ms. Sharina Balaratnam, who will be taking a deep dive into good skin health, while explaining the things that we can do as individuals to achieve it. A very quick note to anyone who is viewing tonight's webinar on a mobile device, please do remember to swipe left so that you can see Sharina's presentation. I can promise you her before and afters are not to be missed. Sharina, over to you. Thank you very much, Francesca, for that incredible introduction. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first ever Good Skin Health and Aesthetic Treatments virtual introduction hosted by Sinashore. I would like to say a big thank you to Sinashore for hosting a patient education webinar all about my favorite topic, discussing skin health. So what we have in store for you today, Sanshore, Francesca, myself, is we would love to introduce you to the world of the science of aging, the science of lasers, global concepts of beauty. We are in the most phenomenal arena of medicine, um, aesthetic and regenerative science. And what I enjoy most about this is it doesn't stop still. It continues to evolve. It continues to get better. And now more than ever, there is no better time, not just to be a doctor or a practitioner, but to be a patient. So I hope that you enjoy my presentation today, and I hope that you enjoy the science of beauty through energy. So Francesca's shared with you a little bit about me. Um, just to give you a bit of background some more, I've been a doctor for 22 years. My former career was in the speciality of plastic surgery and reconstructive medicine, specializing in burn surgery. So with that in mind, with 12 years specializing in burns, this has given me a vast amount of experience in understanding how to approach skin to give it better quality results, not just from a functional point of view, but also from an aesthetic point of view across the ages, across the skin types, from men to women. And this is something that I've enjoyed throughout my career as a doctor. What really drew me to the aesthetic space was I was fascinated by the future. And I'm gonna to come to that because light and the introduction of lasers is now commonplace in my day-to-day -day practice. I'm delighted that I've been able to represent Sinusure uh, over the last five years now. And what that really means to me is that I continue to evolve as a practitioner too. And I say that to you as a prospective patient to anyone out there is that this is such a fascinating time to be in science because for you as a consumer to be involved in webinars like this, you get to learn, you get to be inspired, you get to be empowered with knowledge, just like our hive have been. 
And with all these treatments that you have ahead of you, now's the time more than ever where you have choice. So here in my clinic in aesthetics in Beaconsfield in Buckinghamshire, United Kingdom, I am here to educate you with all the treatments that we have all under one roof. And so you could say my speciality involves treatment blending, how I bring them all together. So I hope today that I get to educate, inspire and empower you with the knowledge of beauty through energy, beauty through laser technology. So a quick before and after about me, that's me probably about 12 years ago now where I used to reconstruct uh, skin cancer, burns reconstruction. On the right, some of the treatments that I have in the clinic, everything now from scalpel has been re re replaced to regenerative aesthetic medicine, using topicals, using facial injectables. And I'm fascinated with the future. I'm not just fascinated with where we are now, and I have a lot that I've brought into my practice in the last six years. I'm actually fascinated also with the future, with the potential of what these devices are going to do because we don't just trigger the skin now, we are continuing to see results getting better to better every single day. I have a dedicated imaging suite, and I want to say to any patient out there that it's really difficult to see your results on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's really going to be other people, other patients, your friends, your family, that will see your results improve over time. For me, I have a dedicated imaging picture, um, more visible, so that patients can actually see their results every single day. So let me take you through what I do here in the practice. I talk about skin health every single day. What does that mean to you? My patients want improvements, like Francesca said, entire dull skin, skin that's lacking in luster. So we're looking at the color. With the color, we want an even tone, even color. We want brightening. We want treatments for pigmentation, discoloration, even redness, vascular changes. We call them thread veins, broken capillaries, that sort of thing. Common thing I get asked for every day, hydration. Doctor, my skin is just getting more and more dehydrated each and every day, each and every year. Can you restore that? My patients want dewy skin. They want that ultimate glow. And then finally, they want clear skin, skin that is bright, that is vibrant, that is even in complexion. And I have a lot of patients on the other end of the spectrum say to me, I feel really saggy. I feel like I'm losing my elasticity, my tone in my skin. Can you do something that is going to make me look and feel tighter? And then we get to one end of the spectrum, something that I see every single day. I get patients struggling and suffering with acne, with scarring, with dilated pores, you know, textural changes of the skin, and aesthetic concerns such as fine lines and wrinkles as well. And that could be anywhere from the skin on the face, as well as the neck. We're seeing more tech neck as we're doing more digital and social media and spending more time in Zoom. And then at the end of another end of the spectrum of more dermatological concerns, the skin pathologies, apart from the acne, the rosacea, the psoriasis, and the eczematous atopic concerns. And fundamentally, our patients say to me, Doc, I just don't like the way, not just I look, but I don't like the way that makes me feel. So we know that beauty isn't just skin deep. When we have something wrong with our skin, when we have skin concerns, we know that it makes us feel a certain way. I know from my past, whenever I've had issues with my skin, my patients will come to me and they will do something like that. And it just goes to show that we lose self-confidence. We lose that empowerment onto ourselves. So that's where I find the most satisfaction in giving patients what they want. So when I look at what skin quality means, not just to my patients, but what it means to me, it can be very stigmatizing to have a skin concern, to have acne, to have rosacea, to have all of these skin concerns. It depicts a lot about ourselves. It depicts how we live, how clean we are. People misjudge somebody with a skin concern. They stigmatize them. It's not right, it's not fair. They think we're unhappy. They think you might be unclean, all of those things. And deep down inside, how much does it say about our happiness? How much does it say about how we look at ourselves, how we look after ourselves? And when I look at patients now, when I speak to hundreds of patients every month, patients are lacking in time as well. So good skin, skin health goes well beyond the aesthetics anymore. It really looks at our aesthetic and emotional well-being. I spend a lot of time talking to patients about how they feel, what they want to address, how they want to live. And all I know is that we're living longer than we ever have before. So when I look at the aesthetic trends, we're seeing a rise in the aging population. A lot of my patients are in their 70s, even their 80s, and they're doing really, really well. 
And at the other end of the spectrum, I have my prejuvenation patients, prejuvenation patients. So I have patients presenting with skin concerns from as young as 18, acne, acne scarring, even starting to get fine lines due to gly glycation. And I'm going to come to that. So we've seen this end of the spectrum, younger patients seeking preventative aging, and that can be a good place to start. And Francesca and I are going to take some questions at the end, talking about when is a good time to start. So with the amount of knowledge and the amount of information, a webinar like this, for example, there is a huge growing awareness on the benefits of healthy aging. Healthy aging versus just looking younger. Sure, we all want to look younger, who doesn't, but we look better when we are healthier. Now more than ever, life is going at a fast pace. Our patients want results now. They want treatments with minimal downtime. So there is a necessary adjustment to tweakments rather than full ablative treatments. So with that comes the expansion of rapidly evolving technology now more than ever. And we are seeing a growing trend towards male patients. Male patients like our female patients. They want the same things. They want the same concerns addressed. And also now more than ever, we're spending a lot of time looking at this. We're in a Zoom boom. We're in a Zoom face concern. A lot more patients are presenting with seeing themselves in these kind of technologies day in, day out. And we're seeing another trend, the bare face chic. What can I do just to bring out the best in my skin to make me look and feel the very best that I can with less and less makeup? Francesca said earlier, it has been one of those years. We never predicted that this would happen. Who knows? Uh, what could happen next, but we are here now and we're blessed with good fortune of technologies, treatments, immune systems. So what I actually have seen is a change in the trends. But up until the, the more recent months, we've seen an increased risk in mask-related acne and breakouts. That's called maskne. I've seen an increased amount in post-inflammatory pigmentation due to the maskne. And we're also seeing, with good weather, new onset pigmentation. And now that we've come out from the winter and we're heading into the summer, we're also seeing changes in hydration levels of the skin. With the amount of washing and repeated hand washing that happened last year, a lot of patients presenting with cracked hands. And with the amount, increasing amounts of inflammation, either due to dehydration or excessive stripping of the skin due to potentially even using the wrong topicals, we're seeing dry, cracked skin, inflamed skin, disruption of the skin barrier, dark circles, puffiness, sagging skin, and just compromisation of the skin. So now more than ever, we want to address something that is going to improve us with time. Look at Halle Berry here. She looks absolutely stunning. And you can see across the decade, she remains almost stood still in time. I call this agelessness. And it's all about skin health and adopting a healthy lifestyle and healthy aging. Now more than ever, our patients look for this right now. Now more than ever, our patients want to look and feel their very best and have adopted ways that which they can do that through modern day lifestyle changes. Health matters now more than ever. And with increasing awareness in how we can look after ourselves using apps, using Zoom, there is so much connectivity on a global basis. There has been ways that we can improve our diet by food and nutrition. We can exercise at home. We have home improvements. We have uh, tech coming into our fitness regimes. Health and relationships now matter more than ever. And what we're really trying to do with our patients is also to build immunity, immunity within themselves, immunity within their cardiovascular status, their respiratory, their musculoskeletal, but also within their skin barriers as well. How do I know all of this? Why do I understand so much about our patients? What does it matter to you? It matters to you because you need to be able to share with your physician, to share with your healthcare professional what it is you are trying to achieve. And it's hard to think, do I need a laser? Do I need a high-tech facial? You may not know what is available out there. So this is where the consultation comes in. I love this part of my um, patient journey the most understanding what a patient needs. We see patients through virtual consultations all the time, every single day. And I know my team are out there right now and they help patients through that journey. With a virtual consultation, this gives you, every patient, the opportunity to share with us your main concerns, how it makes you feel, how it makes you look. And I like to explore that further. So I like to find out more about your lifestyle. What do you do? How do you eat? How do you sleep? What your stress levels are? All these things matter now more than ever, and I'll come to why in just a second. 
So consultations are just a vital way in which you can express what is it you need to achieve in order to function in your day-to-day -day lifestyle. I take my consultations to a whole new level, and that's where it matters to you the most as well, because what we see on the outside is really just what is presented to the outside world. What matters also is not just that, it's what's happening underneath. So I have always been a fan of photography, and I adopt clinical photography on a day-to-day -day basis. We've taken it a step further with a technology called the Vizia Digital Skin Analysis. What this means is that you get a 360 degree analysis on the skin of your face, as well as what happens two millimeters underneath, because that's where the building blocks are, your collagen, your elastin, your, um, your natural flora of the skin, hydration levels, vascular changes, all of those things, pigmentary changes. And we can then generate a treatment plan based on your consultation, what you've shared with us, as well as your clinical investigation. This is something we do every single day and we check from time to time. So common questions, why are we bringing skin health into this? Because this is a typical patient that I see every single day. But I'm sure you're probably thinking, she must have presented with redness, dehydration, inflammation, all those things I talked about, fine lines. This is someone I know very well. She's the happiest, most positive person around. But she, she'd been through a tough time in her life. And believe it or not, she presented with wanting treatments to her frown lines. I hope you can appreciate that. I just didn't see the frown lines. I looked beyond that. And when I listened to what her face said to us, it spoke to me a couple of other things. There were negative messages despite her positive message. There were frown lines and less tired looking and sunken cheeks was what she asked of me in the consultation. But what I actually saw was someone who looked like she had angry skin, inflamed skin, and she didn't look healthy. So that's where my level of communication comes in. I need to take what she wants and translates it into what she actually needs, in my opinion. So when I think about what I need to do next, I need to explain to a patient what's going on, what is actually happening to the skin. The Time magazine actually wrote this up really well back in 2004. So this is nothing new. It's inflammation and aging. So really, what are we asking ourselves? Are we inflammaging? So this is something that we talk about on a day-to-day -day with our patients every time. Great time to educate our patients also during the consultation process. And in order for patients to understand where they are now with their consultation and their assessment and where they're going, it's important to understand the aging process. Now more than ever, we talk about something called DNA determinism. We have so much choice, ladies and gentlemen. We have so much choice in the way we can predict our aging as well. So when I think about how we age from our skin, from our soft tissue, from our muscle, from our bony changes as well, we know that a percentage of it is due to our biological clock, our own genes. And that really is only determining 35% of how we age. 35% is not a lot, our biological clock. The rest of it is actually due to something that we call external influences, epigenetic factors, lifestyle, so if you think about it, if 65% of how we age is due to lifestyle influences, that means that we have a choice. We have a choice to actually make changes, changes to the way we live, changes to the way that we approach life, not just what we have done before. That's just life. We enjoy it. What we can do now, what we can do in the future, it is in our control. So we know we are understood that cigarette smoking, excess amounts of alcohol. Look at the picture of the right, the gentleman with the extreme amount of sun damage on the left side of his face. If you're looking on the right side, that's just due to UV damage, not UVB due to the bright sun rays, UVA due to ultraviolet A rays. A rays are all around us all the time. Those are the dull gray rays that we see here in not so sunny England. And they go through the clouds, the glass, and they've gone through his lorry driver glass window and look at the accelerated aging that he sees on the left side of his face. On the extreme left, you have glycation, sugar. Sugar now is coming up trumps. A lot of people are spending more time at home. Sugar causes damage to collagen, to elastin, and I'm seeing a lot more accelerated aging in younger patients too. I wanna to point to the picture in the middle. Stress has certainly overtaken cigarette smoking in causing accelerated aging concerns. It causes changes to collagen, elastin, 
fine lines, wrinkles, dehydration, pigmentation are really coming into foreplay, into the forefront with what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis. So I ask my patients to score themselves on a day-to-day -day basis. Where do you score yourself in your day-to-day -day life? What pace are you running at? How much stress do you have in your life? All of these things put into play cause something called oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is something that happens on a day-to-day -day basis because we produce free radicals within our skin. And we have mechanisms within our body that repairs these free radicals every single day. But when you have a chronic exposure, what that means is a long drawn out exposure to whatever oxidative stress, these repair mechanisms get tired after a while. There are so, only so much they can do. And that's when you have changes, collagen changes, elastin changes. That's when it all suddenly starts taking over. I want to talk about pollution because for those of you who are in cities, in London in particular, Shanghai, Hong Kong, wherever, the dust within pollution particles smaller than your pores can actually filtrate through the skin and cause chronic inflammation deep within the pores. And if you think about it, they are sat there. There's very little that can actually get them out. So that's why it's important to clean your skin and use the right antioxidants, use the right sun protection, because all of these things in play can cause oxidative stress. I want you to pay attention to the latest, the layers of the skin, ladies and gentlemen, because this is really, really key. The external layer of the skin, which is called the epidermis, and you have a dead layer on top of that too, because we produce new skin cells in a six weekly timely fashion. Every six weeks we produce new skin cells and then they deposit at the top layer as dead skin and then they shed on the floor. So if you don't hoover for a month, that is exactly what you see over there. That is what protects our skin. That is the external coat. It's what we call the epidermal barrier. It protects things from going in and it also prevents things from unnecessarily going out. And that is what we see. We get changes in that, changes in lines, wrinkles, pigmentation. Underneath the skin is where we have the real building blocks. And as you can see there, we have your nerves, we have your, your, we have your vascular changes. We get changes there too. And then finally underneath, we have the subcutaneous fat. So when I think about really how we age, there are layers in which we have to discuss with our patients. Because although a patient may see one thing, whether it's a broken capillary, whether it's a pigmentation line, we have all of those weeks and all of those years of changes that we need to address. And the important thing that we have to discuss time-based options as well. So I hope you can understand with, it, with DNA determinism being 65% of how we age, you have a choice on how you choose to age. And now more than ever, even in the last 10 years since I've been doing this, in the last five years since I've been doing this, technology has really evolved. And so how our patients choose to age from the current self into their desired self has really come into the forefront of how I approach my modern day treatments. So I call this dynamic aging, taking control, making it our social responsibility, making it my patient's responsibility. It's a two-way thing. And we want to change the sequence of events that are going to happen, changing our lifestyle and me integrating what I need to do in order to change their accelerated aging part ways. There are certain things we need to address. Inflammation, dehydration, the immune decline in that top layer of the skin. And most patients do want to change components such as redness and vascular and pigmentation. I have a mentor in my world of injectables, Dr. DeMaio, and he has this analogy, we don't go to bed young and wake up an old person. So it doesn't happen overnight. So in my toolbox, in my practice, I have topical skincare. These are just some of it. I want to highlight one thing, ladies and gentlemen, sun protection. That is the best prevention of anything that you can have. So for all of you out there, do get some SPF. And don't forget other areas, your face, your chest, neck, decolletage, the back of the neck, especially for the runners, and also the front of your chest, and even of the back, because we see changes everywhere in, this, in the skin. I wanna take you through common things that I see every single day. This is one of my patients, she's 19 years old, she's now 23, I've been seeing her for four years. And I wanna to talk to you about this combined approach in order to get satisfactory, highly satisfactory changes in the skin. This is someone who's had a chronic acne issue since she was 13. And what we did with a combination of topical skincare, high-tech facials, and then finally with laser treatments as well. You can see she's got refinement, improvement in texture, improvement in tone, improvement in color of the skin. She looks lighter, she looks brighter, she looks tighter. And whilst we can see changes on the surface of the skin, we like to see what's going on underneath because that's when you see cellular changes. 
we've improved the redness concern, we've improved the scars. And when it comes to actually treating patients with acne and scarring, I always say treat young. Treat young because you have the most power, you have the most influence into how you're going to age. We get something called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, mainly in probably my skin type and darker, less likely in hers. But you can see if we left things alone and we didn't do anything, these pigmentary changes will get more ingrained and it will need harder work over a period of time. This is my patient now, whom I presented right at the start. And you can see if I had just treated her frown lines and frown lines only, not only would she be unsatisfied, I would be unsatisfied. She looks more pleasant, she looks more confident, she looks more empowered, she just looks more beautiful. So she's had a combination of strategic topical skincare. She's had another laser treatment called the Icon Photofacial. She's had some injectables, and you can see she just looks like a better version of herself as she presents to the outside world and how she feels. I love to combine my lasers and my topicals with everything. So here's a patient of mine who's 58 years old, and then I used topical skincare and lasers primarily early on, and then we built in some facial injectables and we just watched the skin evolve. I think what I wanna say about lasers here, trigger early because you see those results just continue to improve with time. That's what I call stealthy triggers, stealthy aging, positive dynamic aging. We're doing something at one stage, but the results continue to get better over time. She actually looks better now when we see her. So where does this take me to now? I have, I have been doing this um, for six years. I've been in laser practice for five years, and I didn't do any laser treatments at all 10 years ago. However, I understood skin well. If I didn't introduce lasers into my practice, I feel like I would be missing something to give to my patients that they would really benefit from because the technology using energy to trigger chromophores or targets as we call them. Many patients know about laser hair removal. So the target is the hair, the black in the hair. So I've used lasers now to treat red, which is hemoglobin, which means blood. And we can get improvements in vascular changes, redness, broken capillaries, thread veins successfully. You've seen those pictures. We've also got lasers to treat pigment, which is dark underneath the skin. And we have lasers to treat water. So that is for texture, and acne scars. However, I did really well, but I was missing something treating patients with my skin type. And this is one of the reasons, one of the many reasons that I introduced my very latest laser called the PicoShow laser just under two years ago now, in 2019. I was so excited to have this laser. You know, I, lasers are something that my father spoke to me about in 1991. And I never thought that I would have all these laser technologies under my belt 20 years down the line. This is this is the most advanced laser that you could ever see, that you could ever find. It's the fastest laser on the planet. It's what we call the picosecond laser. It works on a trillionth of a second. It's ideal for treating acne scarring, pigmented lesions, pigmentation, lines, wrinkles. It is so fast by working on a trillionth of a second. It gives no time for downtime because it works on a mechanism of a high impact vibration onto the skin. So we call that photomechanical. It's like a lightning bolt effect. It goes so fast onto the skin, it, it causes an elegant injury. So it doesn't cause anything called a thermal injury because it doesn't get enough time to call that to cause that heat diffusion. So when we think about how quickly patients would respond or would have any downtime, maybe a bit of redness, but it's definitely gone under six hours. So when I compare it to my former technologies, which I love, there is significantly less downtime. So here we are patients evolving, speed of treatment, speed of results, speed of airbrushing the skin, ideal for all treatment areas, the face, the chest, the neck, the decolletage, and for that last indication, treating the darker skin type. So now I have a laser that's able to do everything for me with minimal or no downtime at all. What I uniquely love about the laser is it works as a thunderbolt effect. You can see this honeycombing appearance that you can see under the, on, on, the, on my slide. And what it does is because it comes at a trillionth of a second, you're producing this high impact on the skin, which produces a laser-induced optical bulb. What does that mean? It's an elegant injury. It's a pressure wave. Think of something coming faster than the speed of light and going bam onto the skin and causing an elegant injury to wake up the skin to wake up all the cells underneath the skin, your collagen, your elastin, 
all of those tissues that are going to form the building blocks in the skin over a period of time. So not only is it so fast that it shatters the pigment, it also causes cell signaling. It's a wake up call and says, guys, wake up so we can do something again. Conventional lasers in the past would shatter pigment in this way on the first two images on the left. So they would shatter pigment and leave them as microscopic rocks under the skin or microscopic pebbles under the skin. When we look at how Pico second laser works, it shatters the pigment so much that it, it fragments it into sand. What does that mean? When we have these deposits under the skin, we're more likely to be able to lap them up into the lymphatic circulation so that they can be taken away by the vascular system in the skin and can be deposited into the detoxification system. So what does that mean? You're gonna see faster results. And this is a patient of mine who had former laser treatment. She is young, she's 42 years old. As you can see, she's an outdoor girl, spent some time in the sun. She's got some freckling, she's got some pigmentation. She's starting to show signs of aging. She's got some fine lines, she's got some wrinkles. And here she is now after a few of my former lasers. And now with just one Pico short treatment, just one a year, just to airbrush the skin. I hope you can see that the skin has just woken up again. It's like a light bulb has just gone off underneath the skin. And it's so fresh and you can see the dewiness, the luster, the vibrancy, the control. And I want to say that she's had nothing else. She's had topical skincare and PicoSure treatments. So with that in mind, we want to see what is going on underneath the skin. But that's really where we want to see the changes, not just from the surface pigment. We know what's happening there. It's fragmenting it into these sand-like particles. The sand-like particles are then going underneath the skin, scooped up by the lymphatic system and thrown away, just deposited and just gone away. Are we getting fresh new circulation? But look what's going on underneath the skin. We're seeing changes. We're seeing changes in pigmentation. We're also seeing erasing of fine lines. We're seeing collagenesis, new growth of fresh new collagen that is going to be younger and healthier. So you can see much more positive and healthy aging. This is a personal trainer. Again, young, fit well, 42 years old. Outdoors, it's just a typical lifestyle. I spend outdoors, I train my, train my clientele. And this is her just after two laser treatments. I hope you can appreciate just by looking at the forehead, she's got eradication of lines, fine lines, deeper lines, what we call static lines. So you're seeing a growth of new collagen appear over time and the redness and inflammation slowly go down. Even look at the depth of what we call the nose to mouth line. You can see that that's starting to change. It is less deep, it's starting to tighten. And that's very key because it is near impossible for us to wake cells up. We need to do something quite tr drastic and traumatic. And for somebody like her, she really doesn't have any time for downtime. So these type of technologies in modern day aesthetic and regenerative medicine are key. Everything that appears on us appears due to time. Sun exposure is the most commonest thing that we can see. Look at this patient. You can see she has some textual change. She has some freckling under the skin. And with just three treatments using the PicoShirt laser, which was spaced a month apart, we can see fragmentation of that superficial and deep pigment, and we can see some improvement in texture and tone. I wanna to talk about something here because I'd like you to see some of the lines that are occurring in the base of this patient's neck. Can you see the horizontal or lateral lines? And if you look at the picture on the right with three PicoShirt treatments, these lines are slowly starting to go away. And this is the patient in her 50s. Now, if we go back to ourselves and our 30 something year olds and our 20 something year old patients, we're doing something more now than ever. I call this tech neck due to repeated looking down and looking up. And we're going to inevitably start seeing tech neck and changes to the structures here faster than ever. I feel technologies and treatments like PicoSure are going to become even more common practice in my younger patients. And we're going to be rolling out these type of treatments much more early in low downtime. I'm so excited to show you this picture, ladies and gentlemen, because this is somebody that presented back to us for a follow-up and a PicoShore treatment just yesterday. And we were so blown away to show these results because this is here just after two PicoShore treatments. And we're, we're over the moon. You can see she's in the 50s. And in the picture on the left, she has pigmentation. She has freckling. She has lines. She has wrinkles. She is an incredibly positive person, but she's starting to get deep set sleep lines as well as lip lines, which really, really bothers her. 
So we put it through we put her through a series of two picosure treatments because we're coming up to the summer. But the beauty is with this technology, we can also take it right up to the summer as long as the patient has got good SPF cover. You can see the lightening, the brightening, the tightening of the skin, results that are only going to improve with time. So I'll be excited to see what the next result is going to show. However, I want to show you what we've just seen underneath the skin. This is an exceptional result with somebody with very little or no downtime. You can see the improvements over the top lip. You can see the improvements over the eye. And these are changes that are extremely cellular as well. Did it hurt her? No. Is it going to improve? Yes. So when we see her on the other side, these are results that are going to also improve her inflammation. And I want you to notice one thing on the picture of the right. You can see how she looks wider now on the top of her face compared to the picture on the left where she's wider on the lower face. What does that tell you? It tells you that her cell function is also improving. So just remember how the PicoShow works. It works on a trillionth of a second, faster than anything, tackling the top layer of skin, leaving an elegant injury that's sending cell signaling and waking up all those cells again. Wake up, produce more collagen, produce more elastin. These cells don't just grow overnight. They grow in weeks and they mature in months. So the results only get better in time. I see this type of technology becoming commonplace and they are becoming commonplace in my 40 somethings, my 30 somethings and my 20 something patients to start their skin revitalization as young as they can to get better quality skin for as long as they live. I have been so delighted with the amount of education that I've received in my laser training. And I've been so delighted with our patients for understanding more about the treatments that they are receiving. So ladies and gentlemen, make the most of these type of webinars to ask all the questions. There is so much time now and I can see amazing questions come through. So do fire away, punch away, type away, ask away. We would love to share some answers with you to demystify even more how these technologies can work to give you beautiful skin health. The one thing I want to say is there has been no better time, not just to be a doctor, but to be a patient. You have choice, choice in how you choose to age. The most important thing is addressing lifestyle changes. And when, with the correct lifestyle changes, with the correct technological uh, advances as well, choosing your practitioner, you're choosing your teams, the ones that are going to connect with you the most during your patient journey. I wanna thank Sinusure for pulling this together, this amazing patient education journey for you to educate you all about good skin health and positive and healthy aging. And ladies and gentlemen, we would love to take some questions now. So over to you, Francesca, and it would be wonderful to open this to the group and to see if we can help anybody to demystify their questions and concerns. Sharina, that was fascinating as always. And what I loved most was how you highlighted that really important link between how our physical skin health affects our emotional well-being so clearly. Um, certainly something which I think we're all becoming increasingly aware of now. Um, and some great before and after shots as well. Uh, you and I often talk about how to optimize the skin through technology and really get it back to peak performance. And I think your images, yeah. particularly the stuff underneath the skin, it, it shows that the right device and the right hands can achieve some really transformative results. So congratulations. As, uh, as Sharina said, we're going to be opening up the floor to some questions now, um, and I can see some coming in, which is fantastic. But before we take those, I'd love to know from you, Sharina, what's the most common question that you hear from patients that are coming into clinic and considering laser treatment? Thank you, Francesca. Well, the commonest thing I get asked uh, are a handful of things. Firstly, is, is it going to hurt? You know, we all have this preconception of this laser being this scary piece of equipment in the corner of the room and it's going to do something very industrial and very heavy duty and there's little us just sat there waiting for something high impact to happen. I can't begin to express the refinement that's gone on to the creation of these technologies. I've had the fortune of being in my clinic when my uh, service engineers come and take the lid off and I can see the exquisiteness of how these things have been made 
to deliver the right amount of energy with the right set of hands and the right set of training with the right understanding of the laser physics to impact the skin. So the commonest question is, does it hurt? And with something like the PicoSure, it just does not. And I felt it on my skin, so I know. And with my patients, I say, no, it doesn't hurt. So that's what I call elegant and elegance in technology. Another thing that we'll also say to patients is I want my patients to feel super comfortable when they come in. So whilst you can apply topical numbing cream to take the edge off the skin, you can apply cooling to the skin, which we do after the treatment just to reduce the anxiety, reduce the, you know, sometimes you get an element of heat that comes through with that. But patients really don't need too much with um, something like the Pico Show technology. So but as I said, is ideal for the girl or the gentleman with no time for downtime. So that's my commonest question. The next commonest question I do get asked is, you know, Dr. Sharina, when's a good time to start? You know, shall I just wait till the signs have arrived? Shall I wait till things are starting to get ingrained? Shall I wait till I've aged and then I'll come and see you? And I'll say, look, it's almost like saying, shall I wait till I get a heart attack and see my cardiothoracic surgeon? No, don't, don't wait till the damage has been done. You want to prevent these things from happening within reason. So whilst you're starting to say, whilst you're starting to show some signs and whilst you're starting to show signs of pigmentation, some fine lines starting to come up and you're starting to become aware about these, that's when you should start. That is a great time to start. Your laser treatment. The question as, as to when any of us should start these treatments is really interesting because actually a, a lot of it comes down again to that patient practitioner relationship doesn't it I think there's there's a huge sort of responsibility and you touched on this earlier in what you said with uh, um, you know how, how the patient needs to do their research as much as anything else and they need to be educated and your primary role as a doctor is to educate and to diagnose and to ult ultimately treat but I do think the patient has a, a great responsibility as well towards doing their homework and, and webinars like this are certainly really really informative and, and helpful for everyone I'm sure. Um, something else that came in the next question is about downtime and I think obviously downtime is a huge consideration for, for those of us who are new to laser perhaps and you know as, as you mentioned those sort of lasers from the dark ages many moons ago where you know there was significant downtime and I don't know what how do you go about reassuring patients about the downtime associated with these treatments? Great question and downtime is everything you know now more than ever with the social calendars which we have which have shrunk and with the work calendars which have increased and the amount of zoom facing and front facing and now return back to our meets and our well you know meeting up with our friends and families downtime is super important now more than ever let's go back to you mentioned the dark ages of lasers the downtime then could be as much as six weeks if you think about our patients now they won't be able to give us that level of downtime so we have to refine our treatments we have to refine our technologies and that's why we look for the latest the very best and the finest in technologies to meet the trend in which the patient requires in this day and time. Let's go back to the evolution of the laser. So from that four to six weeks, and then the refinement of the technologies led to maybe one to two weeks, depending on what type of laser treatment you're having. So let's take, for example, my, my previous laser treatment that I first brought in, uh, the Icon laser, which I still use every single day at the clinic. That would give me downtime of say maybe sometimes one to three days and it's only because of the level of um, the level of tissue injury that we want to actually create onto the skin to create as a desired impact so it's what i call a controlled injury we're in control of what we're doing with and for the patient and with the amount of tissue injury comes a little bit more redness a little bit more swelling we prepare patients for that with the patch test we prepare them with topical anesthesia we prepare them with skin care and because we do it so well and we know our patients well and they're well hydrated pre-treatment, they come out with lesser injury, lesser downtime. Now I'm bringing into play the PicoShow laser. So we've advanced even more because we know we have the fastest laser on the planet. It's increasingly more refined. It creates an elegant injury. So it's what I call my stealth laser. You come in, you have a treatment, it's airbrushed the skin, it's worked on your pigment pretty much straight away and then you wait for the rest of it to disappear over time. At the same time, you've been given an elegant injury that's going to work in a stealth-like fashion with your collagen and elastin 
So even if you didn't have the full protocol of four treatments and you just had one and you had it maybe one every six or 12 months, you're just going to get a better quality of skin refinement over time. So downtime has changed significantly in my practice in the last six years, Francesca. I, I love that. I, I love the idea of stealth treatments. I think that's a really succinct way of of marrying what is actually a very futuristic treatment, but actually something that's very subtle and really flies under the radar. And I think you're so right, none of us has time for downtime right now. Um, you touched on patch tests and actually somebody sent in a question about necessary prep before having laser treatments. Maybe you can expand a little bit more for us on, on why patch tests are so necessary and what they enable you to deliver therefore as, as the practitioner. Absolutely. So what the patch test is, is an opportunity for two parties to come together, the practitioner and the patient, to come together with the technology to decide what settings am I going to use to the patient and for the patient in order to give you the desired result. So take, for example, laser hair removal, because I think a lot of the audience will be very familiar with laser hair removal treatments. You still need a patch test for that to make sure we use the correct settings to reach the target, which is the hair root, which is dark, in order to cause destruction of that. So that is a certain setting that we use to create the result and to create the injury. And we also want to create no downtime. We don't want to create any, um, we don't want to create any issues with the skin that is going to result in burns or blistering or all of those things. So those are what we don't want, negative side effects. Now bring into play something like the Pico Shore. We want to create a patch test that is going to give us the result from pigmentation correction, lines and wrinkles, etc. So we carry out a patch test to get our treatment settings right to where we need them to be, to give you the results and the recovery that you need so that you can go back to your normal activities as fast as you can. So those, that is what the patch test is all about. It's not that we do it just to be nice to you, etc., or to get to know you. We do it because it's an absolute prerequisite. It concerns me in this day and age that I sometimes hear patients who have had laser treatments without a patch test, because think about what a patch test is. We're literally patch testing it on a small part of your face that you can probably cover if you didn't want face other people to see, or we could cover it with a little bit of makeup. And we want that little strip of patch testing area to heal. If you'd just gone ahead and had a full treatment, for example, what if it wasn't the right setting? What if it created too much tissue trauma? What if you had too much downtime? That is not the desired effect that we want. Look at the other end of the spectrum. I'm going the too far, but let's look at the other end of the spectrum. What if it's not enough? What if the settings aren't enough? What if you're under treating? Our patients come for results. They don't want to be under treated. So we need to make sure that we hit it right on the sweet spot. We need to get our settings right so we get the result. I love that. It's actually creating a very bespoke experience for the patient as well, isn't it? That that real fine tuning is what's going to deliver those incredibly transformative results, which we all saw in your beautiful befores and afters. Um, somebody's asked about the safety and the efficacy of, of these devices. And certainly safety is a big one when we come to talk about laser. And, you know, you touched on those scare stories of old. And I think patients, particularly when they're pursuing a new treatment, often they're, they're concerned, not only are they going to get results, but also is it causing harm to the skin? Is it going to cause damage to the skin that they hadn't anticipated? So how do you put their mind at ease about the safety, but also the efficacy of, of these devices? All brilliant points. And these are questions that I want my patients to ask me. And I say, bring on these questions. You have a right to know, you know, and I take it one step back. How do I know I'm going to get a laser treatment? Uh, how do I know I'm going to get a laser technology that is going to be safe, that is going to be effective, that is going to give me um, reproducible results that I can see, feel, track, measure, and celebrate with my patients every single day. How do I have the assurance? And I just go for one thing, clinical research, clinical data, safety and efficacy uh, data as well, and I will only go for the best because that's where my level of investment needs to be to give me the assurance that we're gonna deliver best in class safety and results to our patients. So when I look at the high, uh, the high levels of research and development that has gone into my PicoShore laser from Sinusure, my Icon laser, I also have the Sculpture laser for body contouring. I look at the, the amounts of R&D research and development that has gone into making and creating these technologies. And these are futuristics. They are state of the art. They are best in class. And so my decision making is really key so I can deliver that to patients. The next thing I think about is 
you don't just buy a technology, you've got to look after it. So it's no different than servicing a car. You need to make sure that it's functioning at peak performance, at peak settings, and you need to make sure that whatever wavelength of energy that you're delivering and that you've set due to laser physics understanding and what the requirements are due to our clinical training with our trainers from Sinusure, we need to make sure that we're delivering those right wavelengths. So we need to make sure we service and maintain our, treat, our technologies. So we know our service engineers very well, and we have regular um, maintenance booked into our diary at certain times of the year to make sure that our patients are going to get the right settings that they want. I have seen our service engineers remove the covers from these technologies, and it's exquisite. And I watched them actually service them to the high level of standard. So that way I know that when we've got that safety report, we can adequately say you are actually getting the best in class settings that you deserve to get the results that you want. I love that. It's it's like you have to service your machines just the just in the same way that we all need our sort of little MOT and we all need to sort of keep keep tabs, have our benchmark on what it is that we ought to be achieving. And and it's no different for you and your machines. It's it's very impressive. And um, somebody's asked a question about how many sessions they ought to be having when it comes to laser. Um, I'm sure that's obviously very much dependent on the individual, isn't it? Absolutely, Francesca. So this is where the detailed consultation comes about. You know, it's all about having the time to have your to have your time with your practitioner to explain what is what is going on, what is going on with your skin. You know, identifying the time frames, identifying the triggers, identifying your lifestyle influences, identifying where you are now as a human being. And looking at the history is important, but also the physical assessment. So which is why it's really key that we meet our patients, that we see them face to face after the Zoom consultation, that we have them in front of us and we carry out a physical assessment using skin imaging, for example. Skin imaging gives us the opportunity to not just look at the surface of the skin, we can now look beyond that. We can actually see where these vascular changes are. We can see where the pigmentary changes are. And with that, we can say, you might need one session, if this is all you're looking for, this light airbrushing of the skin, so that you can just get a little bit of a quick fix and airbrushing, get some collagenesis or collagen formation over time, together with some pigment removal, some fine line removal, and we can maybe do that even four times a year. However, if you're looking for a full protocol, if you're looking for rejuvenation, revitalization, then a classic protocol for our patients with PicoSure is one treatment once a month, and we do that four times. And that has been my ultimate for the last two years with PicoSure. And we maintain every six months just with one treatment, just with one treatment. But I think the key thing is people go through things in their life. They go through changes. And there's been a lot of emotional change over the last one year. And we have seen a lot of accelerated aging because we haven't seen our patients as rigorously as we have before. So we're being very customized right now with our PicoSure treatments, maybe even having two back to back combined with some topical skin care. So I think the key thing with this is speak to your practitioner, speak to your team so that you can really get something quite bespoke put together for you. Great answer as to be expected. Um, really nice question, I think it might have to be our last one, um, but somebody's asked about good skin health and what it means to each of us. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that first and foremost and we can bounce back. Oh gosh, well you know for me it's, it's good skin health is it, it's not just on how something looks on the outside. I know when I have a little blemish or something that comes up, sure, it's not nice, but I don't like how it makes me feel on the inside. I don't like how self-conscious it makes me feel. I don't like how self-conscious it makes my patients feel as well, and it bothers us. And over a period of time when it bothers us so much, it can have such an impact on somebody's psychological well-being. And when it impacts us psychologically, it just has a detrimental effect to us as a human being and how we represent our, ourselves to the outside world. So for me, good skin health is all about making sure your health, that your skin health is in, it's what you and I call our peak performance, you know, so that we're able to deliver, not just to society, not just to our families and teens, but more importantly to ourselves more than ever. So I, I bring into play also the immunity of the skin. So good skin health now is also more about living well, being healthy, looking after the immunity of the skin, and PicoSure remains a day-to-day -day practice that I bring in. You've just seen my pic pictures of my patients from yesterday. I shared her across my Instagram yesterday. So for those of you out there, check out my Instagram you know, page because that's her right there sharing how she feels. So that's what Good Skin Health means to me. What about you? 
It's interesting because had you asked me 10 years ago what good skin health meant to me, it probably meant having a fabulous suntan. And to me, healthy skin was always synonymous with a tan and probably a little bit of light freckling. And actually, I think with education, and this is something that you're really hot on with your patients, and I know this as, as somebody who stepped foot in your clinic, I think when you start to see um, that the signs of what skin damage can look like, it really does reinforce that idea of protection. And you mentioned SPF. It's the one thing I do not leave the house without religiously, even if I'm just popping to the shop to get the carton of milk, you know, full face of sun cream, always on the decollete, even on the backs of the ears and the neck, exactly as you said, Sharina. Um, and so I think, it's, I think it's reframing what good skin health means to us now. Today, for me, good skin health is when I look at my skin and it's clear, it's beaming, um, it's, it's also, um, it's energized as well, you know? You, you spoke so much about the, the digital devices, the tech neck, um, and, and a lot of that can contribute to this very stagnant sort of looking skin. And you're a, a great believer in the power of manual lymphatic drainage, which I love. I've had many facials on, um, on the treatment table at Aesthetics, and it always starts with a lovely manual lymphatic drainage. And I think really eliminating that, that toxic water, the, uh, the toxins that have accumulated is, is such a brilliant way to sort of restore the circulation. And it's all the stuff that runs underneath the skin, exactly as you said. So less about the surface tan now, more about picking up, energizing what's underneath exactly. And then seeing what comes to the surface as a result and hopefully it's it's good healthy skin so yeah Absolutely. nice i think we both agree there actually we do it's about it's about lighting up the skin from the inside and very similar to that patient's picture when when i look at our patients you want to see like a light bulb just gone off underneath their skin and it's, i love it's, that expression it's like a light bulb's gone off underneath the skin and it's it's powerful it's beautiful and mm -hmm. and our patients feel it and that's what you want with them, radiating this positive radiance, this positive energy in their skin coming out. And then it positive reinforces part positive. And so there's something else I call in my practice, I call it a, the halo effect. Because when, when one lights up the other, you're only gonna keep getting a better result over time. So there we go. That's, that's my beauty through energy and that's the energy through beauty. So true. Um, you've, you've made me long to, to come back to aesthetics and, and jump on the treatment table. Um, well, I think everyone, that's probably all we have time for tonight. And let me just start by saying a huge thank you to everyone who managed to join us today. It's been wonderful to have you all with us. I hope tonight's conversation has inspired you. It's inspired me listening to Miss Valorat and talk um, as eloquently as she does. Um, and I hope it's also started you on your own journey towards achieving even better skin health. Um, please don't forget to check out the new patient website, which is www.aestheticsbysignassure.co.uk. Um, and if you go on there, you'll find even more information on patient education, uh, such as future webinars and events uh, such as tonight's. Finally, uh, it goes about saying a very big thank you, Sharina, for your excellent overview. Um, but, but also from my perspective, from demystifying the world of aesthetics and, and particularly lasers, which are a complex subject matter. And you, you did a very beautiful and eloquent job of, of simplifying that science, um, but also showing us ways that we can all look and importantly feel like the very best versions of ourselves. So thank you. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure, Francesca. And, you know, thank you very much to you and to Sinusure for being a part of this and also to all of our audience for attending this evening. You know, I'd love to thank you all. I wish you a wonderful year ahead, a wonderful evening ahead, but also a wonderful, informative, educational year ahead as well to learn about how light and energy can be used to revitalize your skin and to brighten up your future even more. So good night, everybody. I hope you all stay well. Bye, everyone. Good night. Thank you.